Okay, in this video, I'm going to quickly take you through how to configure Promoflex uh, and the landing area to land the data inside of uh, using Atlas Data Factory. So, with Azure Data Factory, obviously to land the data, we're going to use the Azure Data Factory copy. Um, and with the copy there, it's, it's like a bulk, bulk copy operation. Uh, you cannot add additional transformations in the pipeline during the actual between the source query and the target delivery. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, extract the data using the copy command, um, get the source query, take the data like that and land it into either a landing table or a file system. Now for Azure Synapse, what we currently have developed is we're going to land the data um, using the copy command directly into a Synapse database. For any SQL Server um, compatible source like Azure SQL Database, uh, SQL VM or a managed instance, we're going to land the data into a SQL database. Um, and then for Snowflake, we're going to land the data into Blob Storage. Going forward into the next version, we are going to support for all of our cloud sources the ability to land the data um, apart from Snowflake because Snowflake, you can't, there's no sort of Snowflake copy command just yet in um, Azure Data Factory. We're going to be able to allow you to land the data, let's just say, take Synapse as an example, to land the data either directly into the Synapse database or into a data lake or a blob storage. Currently for Synapse and for any SQL server database, we're learning data directly into the database tables for now. And then from those database tables, those landing tables or the landing area, we will take the data and move it using Azure Data Factory and stored procedures or ELT code, both for you know all the Microsoft sources and for Snowflake, we're creating Snowflake stored procedures to take the data from this landing area here and process the data into the modern data warehouse or into its relevant data warehouse. Well, as you can see, that gives you the ability to easily switch between the different modern data warehouse environments. So you can easily switch using the same metadata, just different configuration, switch between trying out Synapse, Snowflake, or SQL database, depending on which what your preference is. So with that, let's quickly go into a demonstration and I'll show you how to configure that in Bumbleflex. Okay, this is Bumbleflex 2020. And one of the things that we've added in, in this version is a, a number of more metadata samples for you to use. So what I'm going to do here is just show you how we would use one of our starting samples and configure that um, into to using um, Azure Data Factory. So on this low, on our dashboard here, so if you go to Bimo Flex, it loads up the dashboard and under the getting started guide, you'll see that here is a number of metadata samples here, all the way from you know configuring Data Vault with SSIs and Data Marts um, to Synapse with Data Vault, Data Mart, and Azure, with Azure Data Factory or Synapse, Snowflake, um, and with SQL databases, and even down the bottom here, we have an example of an Azure Data Factory um, Synapse solution using Dynamics as a source. But for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to just go ahead and grab the starting point here. I'm going to go replace the version, and now what I've done here is I'm loading, you know, our yeah, a really a example that has no metadata except for a couple of connections configured here, a couple of projects and a couple of patches. Because I'm only interested in showing you the source to sort of landing area configuration and in the next presentation, I'm gonna actually show you how we land the data. I'm gonna just go and get rid of some of the metadata that I'm not needing. So I'm gonna remove the data vault one here. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna archive the data vault one here um, and I'm gonna archive the Data Mart one here. And then what I'm going to do is take go my source one here, which is going to take my data from a source connection, stage the data, and I have persistent staging switched on here. And I'm going to a data vault. I'm going to change this to just say I'm just going to stay in the data vault space here. I'm going to save that. I'm going to do the same with my batches. I'm just going to get rid of my uh, data vault batch here. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of my uh, data mart batch here. Again, this is just to clean up the entire solution here. And then lastly, I'm going to go to the connections here. I'm going to get rid of my data vault uh, connection because I'm not going to go to the, in this presentation to the data vault and to the data mart connection here. So what I have now is I have my starting point. Um, so let's go ahead and actually start um, configuring this for Azure Data Factory. So the first thing we need to do is go to our projects and over here on the integration template, we're going to say we're going to use Azure Data Factory as a source to target. So instead of using SSI to move my data, I'm going to use Azure Data Factory. I am going to get some warnings or errors here saying that, you know, 
I have, you've just configured your uh, integration template here to use Azure Data Factory, but none of your connections are set up to use the cloud or to use Azure Data Factory link services. So let's go ahead and fix that up. So I'm gonna go ahead here and go to my connections. Now, the first thing we need to do when we configure our connections is remember, we need to configure a landing connection. This is different to our SSIS templates where we can just land the data straight into the staging table because we could do some transformations in the pipeline. So what, to create a landing area, I'm just going to get, uh, grab my staging uh, connection here, and I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm just going to call this BFX, you know, underscore land. You know, again, the names, you could make it whatever you want to do, it, but let's just go ahead for that. And then on the landing connection here, I need to, well, actually now I need to go and go ahead and actually configure everything for the cloud. So this landing connection here, let's go ahead and change the integration states to landing area. And I'm going to leave it um, like that at the moment. The next thing I need to do is I need to say this is actually a cloud enabled source here. So I'm going to switch on the cloud and I'm going to get my link service type here as SQL Server. Now, again, as you can see here, this could be an Azure SQL database or an um, Azure SQL managed instance. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then I'm going to go ahead here and I can configure my link service attributes here. Now, these link service attributes here is exactly the same as the ones that you would see on the Azure portal. Now, what we recommend, obviously, is that we're going to go and uh, change this to an Azure Key Vault here. And um, a couple of things that I need to uh, point out here is um, when you're loading data into, let's just say, um, SQL Server, you know, you, you have the ability to do cross database queries. But if you're doing Azure SQL Database and Azure um, uh, Synapse, you may have a little bit more limitations. So what you want to do at this stage is possibly just call this at the database level here, uh, BFXDB and then also the connection string because they're going to be the same kind of connection string. And I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to reuse that in a second. So we're going to use Azure Key Vault for our, to store our connection strings. Um, so just to recap on the landing connection, change the integration state to landing, uh, choose your database here because again, um, don't worry too much about the connection string for now because it's Azure Data Factory doesn't use this connection string. It's going to use this connection string down the bottom here and um, give it the secret name for the Key Vault. Uh, I'll save that, and now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and configure my other connections also for the cloud. So I'm going to go and do the source here. Again, switch that on, and just go Key Vault here. And for the source one here, that's all I need to do. Um, and when you're on a source, you have to say, where do you want to land the data? Hence, we created the landing connection at first. So I'm going to land the data there, and now I've got my source landing the data into here. I've got my ODS going over here. And on my ODS, again, I'm just going to, uh, or my persistent staging, I'm going to switch that on. I'm just going to change this. Again, I'm going to have to use the same connection string here, and it's the same database name. So I'll make it a DB, right? And that's all I need to do. Again, the, um, when you get into the Azure Data Factory deployment side of things, the key vault stuff becomes a little bit more important, but that's documented on our website. I'm going to do the same for the staging. Drop that there, key vault. Do that and then go ahead here and say db and save that and lastly my bimal catalog again this is the orchestration engine where we do all of our logging of row counts and things like that i'll change that to sql authentication and i'll leave the bimal catalog connection string there recommend that you guys to also do that and save that and that's it now i have set up my connections and my landing area everything for the cloud the last thing I want to do, or you may want to do, is if you already have a key vault in your Azure Data Factory, you may already have one. Um, what you want to do there is go and actually, instead of using our auto-generated key vault, which is going to create just a generic name um, for the key vault, it's going to create a key vault for you. But if you already have a key vault, you can add the name in here. So I'm going to add my key vault name in here, and that's called Bimal Flex. Check the spelling, I'll tab out of it. It'll auto populate the URL for you. You can change it, but we recommend leaving it because that's gonna be the same. I'll save that. The same in my landing area. Just choose the key vault that I want. Save that again. Operational data store. Save that again. And my, go ahead here and just have all of them saved. See my key vault. And now I have configured 
a, a, a solution here. I've got all my connections that is cloud enabled, that is going to use link services to move my data around. My batches can stay the same. I have my project. I've changed my project integration stage and I've set it up. So now I'm ready to actually go and uh, get some data, import some metadata and actually build out an Azure Data Factory solution that will take my data from the source system and load it into this target system. Thank you for watching.